Hey folks, Dr. Mike here from Renaissance Purization with Charlie Jung, also of Renaissance Purization. We are going to demo the extension slash push down for triceps, same idea. We're gonna talk about what not to do, how to fix, and what to do. Remember the target for the tricep push down is, well, the triceps, but because of the positioning, it doesn't target the long head as much. People seem to be obsessed with the triceps long head. That's much better targeted when you do extensions overhead and actually when you do any kind of pulling movements. This targets the other two tricep heads. No big deal. Those also need to grow. Let's get to fixing the tricep extension and making sure you are jacked. All right, folks, mistake number one, super common, is a partial range of motion for tricep pushdowns. Happens all the time because you can use more weight this way and feel proud of yourself. Unfortunately, it's unlikely to get you the best tricep growth. So we want you to do a full range of motion instead, which can be humbling, but is probably much more effective. Charlie, give us a demonstration of what bro science partial ROM looks like. Okay, we're gonna be doing somewhere in the mid range there. No lockouts, not coming all the way up. It's fun, you can use a lot of weight, maybe not the best idea. And then show us what full range looks like. We're gonna coming all the way up and all the way down for a lockout, actually using the tricep through a full range of motion. We're not gonna be Hercules lifting all the weights, but we're gonna be getting more hypertrophy. Next mistake is thinking there's one exact correct way to do pushdowns where there are actually three. And you could use any one of the three sort of in a phasic manner where you use one of them for a couple of mesocycles, then it gets a little stale on you, use another one and so on and so forth. Let's take a look at the three. No right answers here, it's just three different options. And a lot of times it comes down to which one you feel the most and is easiest on your joints. So Charlie, show us the first variant. It's when we allow our elbows to track forward and we come up a little bit higher. So you notice the elbows come forward in this. Now people will say this is wrong, but they would be wrong themselves because now we're actually using a little bit of long head and we're getting a really, really great stretch through the bottom part of the tricep. Awesome. Another way to do the tricep extension is to keep the elbows completely locked and only move the forearms. Totally fine. Great. Allows us to be super strict. No problem. Sometimes people experience some elbow discomfort doing this. So what they can do is actually allow their elbow to track back on the way up. And now it's more of a push down rather than the other two, which is more of a tricep extension. You can use any one of these so long as when you begin your set, you know which one you're using so you can count reps appropriately. All of them are fine. They're essentially three versions of an exercise similar to like a wider stance squat, a medium stance squat, and an air stance squat. There's no correct answer of which one hits your quads. All of them hit your quads. Pick the one which feels best for your quads and the best for your knees and hips, that's the one that's right for you and feel free to use the others when the time comes up. Same thing with the tricep extension. You can move your elbows forward, just know that you're doing it. You can keep your elbows locked, know that you're doing it, and you can move your elbows back. All of them are 100% fine. Next mistake is not having a standard range of motion for every single repetition. You have to be able to ensure a standard range of motion so you can count to make sure you're doing the same amount of stimulus every time and being able to expand it and also to track performance. If your reps look different every week, how do you know your performance went up? Maybe you just cut your range this week. Who knows, right? So every rep should look pretty much the same. Pick a technique and stick to it and go through the full range of motion. So the bad way of doing this, Charlie, bro it out. You know, we do this and sometimes we do some short reps and sometimes the elbows come back and sometimes we do that when we feel like it. I've literally seen people do all of these in one set. Who knows what they're doing? The right way to do it is to pick a technique. Which one you want, Charlie? Okay, we're letting the elbows come forward. Awesome. Notice they're coming forward the same way every single time. He's going all the way to full lockout every single time and all the way back up until his biceps touch his forearms. That's it. Super common mistake on pretty much every hypertrophy exercise, not controlling the eccentric. The good thing about not controlling the eccentric or the descent is that you get to feel better about yourself because you get to do more reps and use more weight. The bad thing is it causes less muscle growth. So when we're on the tricep extension, we're gonna make sure to milk out the eccentric. That doesn't mean you have to do it for five seconds, though that is a viable option, but at least, gee, one or two seconds actively controlling the movement. Charlie, mess this up for us and show us how to do it bro style with no control. Boom, and boom, we're not trying to do the eccentric, that shit is hard. What about doing it correctly? Comes down and we control, and comes down and we control. Charlie, show us a slow version of the eccentric. So this would be something like a three or four second eccentric. It's just another way of doing things. Control is the most important part. How fast you go, very secondary. Next mistake is confusion about the lockout. Should you be locking out your elbows or not? 
Some folks will say the lockout is a big part of what the tricep does and you want that peak tension and squeeze. Some folks will say that that removes the constant tension element and it doesn't let metabolites sum up as much. Both folks have their point. The thing is, it's just two correct ways of doing an exercise know which one you're doing and only do that for a time, especially in one session. So if you choose to lock out the elbows, make sure that you really milk a lockout for a split second at the bottom. Charlie, show us how that works. So he's going to lock it out, squeeze, and then come back up. He's going to lock it out, squeeze, and come back up. And then the other version is going almost to lock out, still full range of motion, but not quite locked out, keeping the tension on the muscles the entire time. Both are totally cool. We can actually mix these two methods together by doing a few reps without a lockout. And then when our triceps get really tired, we can lock it out, rest for a second, and then get back to work. So he's gonna lock it out and rest, and then he's gonna go again and do almost locked out reps. Until that happens again, just know how many intervals you're doing so you can plan ahead for next week. Next mistake, very common, is to flare the elbows. By flaring out your elbows, you get to use your lats, actually, and your chest to help you press the weight down. That's so sweet, because you get to use more weight, but unfortunately, your triceps actually get less of a stimulus, and the fatigue to the other muscle groups and the rest of your body goes up for no reason. So, Charlie, bro it out for us. Do some tricep presses. Yeah, sweet, that's like a weird decline bench press. Now, you'll see some very high-level pros doing this. The reason they do it is because their lats and triceps are so big, they can't actually get their elbows any closer. What we want you to do is not be completely in line, as that may not be possible for you if you're actually jacked. Just get your elbows as close to your sides as you can and don't willfully press the bar down. Extend the bar down using your triceps. Charlie, show us what that looks like. So we're actually going to keep our elbows as close together as we can and do proper extensions. Very good. What about where to put your shoulders, okay? A lot of folks say there's this completely proper place to do it. It turns out there are a couple correct answers, pretty much only one correct answer for super, super strong people, but we'll get to that in a second. So fundamentally, there are sort of four poles in this. One is doing tricep extensions with your shoulders protracted. So Charlie's gonna put his shoulders forward completely, yep. And then he's gonna do tricep extensions like that. Totally fine way to do them. The opposite is retracting the shoulders. So he's gonna retract his shoulders and do tricep extensions. Totally fine way to do them. He can also elevate his shoulders. So he's basically shrugging up and he's gonna do his uh, extensions that way. And also he can depress his shoulders if he wants and do his tricep extensions that way. Everything's super cool, here's the deal. When you get super strong, the position that you get put into just by default, because it's really heavy weight, is going to be a retracted position that is elevated. Almost everyone strong does their tricep extensions from this position because they would have to, good enough, Charlie, they would have to fight the weight down to depress it and actually it, you know, protract the scapulae. That would require extra effort from muscles that are not the triceps and are not the target and take the brain away from focusing on getting the best tricep workouts. So fundamentally, the answer is wherever you feel comfortable and you can really focus on your triceps, don't you worry about what your shoulders and scapulas are doing. Now, on the other hand, if you really feel the triceps more when you protract and you have no problem depressing and still focusing on the tricep, go to town. But as you get stronger, you may find that this position defaults to being the one that feels best. Next mistake is standing too far away from the machine or too close to the machine. If you stand too far away from the machine, you can start to feel it less in your triceps and more in your lats as the machine pulls you away and you actually get a lot of lat activation and rear delt stuff and it turns out that that might not be the greatest thing for you to focus on your triceps. Another problem is if you stand really close to the machine, you might just be super awkward and you might be sort of scratching your face with the machine and it doesn't work super well. The ideal position is something you have to determine just by feel. Start off, oh, about six inches to a foot away from where the cable is and give that a shot. You'll be able to tell where you feel best and that's really the correct answer. There is no 100% right answer to how far or how close to stand next to the machine. Also, you don't have to make sure to press in a straight line. There is no rule in any book that says that's a good idea. Arcing is totally fine. Charlie, try to press in a straight line to make sure that the bar only travels straight. Yeah, you end up kind of having to push the bar out at the end and take a weird body angle. That's totally fine. But if you do a regular tricep extension, it's gonna arc into you. Nothing wrong with that. So don't perseverate on the crazy details. Just do a good job stimulating the muscle. The next concern is thinking that there is an optimal pushdown bar 
or some kind of attachment or hand position. That is pure nonsense. You have to go by what stimulates the muscle the most. You feel the most tension in the triceps. You feel the most burn in the triceps. You get the most pump in the triceps and your triceps get super weak and tired directly there and super messed up after training and potentially sore. If that happens, that's a really great thing. And if your elbows and shoulders and forearms and wrists feel good, then you have picked a very effective variant and there are very many of them and it's okay to have your favorites. For example, people ask, should I do tricep extensions with a wide grip? Should I do tricep extensions with a close grip? Should I do it underhand? Should I do it even with this attachment at all? Maybe I can do a rope. All of them are 100% fine as long as your joints feel good and your muscles are being targeted. If someone says, listen, close grip's the only way to go and you're doing tricep extensions and it hurts the crap out of your shoulders and it beats up your elbows and you're like, God, I guess the right way to go is just gonna hurt me, fine. That is total BS. If you're super weird for whatever reason, you actually feel your triceps the best out here and it happens to really just not bother your elbows or shoulders at all, 100% do it. For example, you guys know the V handle? I don't ever do the V handle because the V handle hurts either my wrists or my elbows or my shoulders or I can't do a full range of motion. But a ton of people swear by the V handle, they love it. Not a damn thing wrong with that. Do what works for you and feel free to explore. The last mistake in tricep pushdowns isn't a huge mistake, but it can get in the way of effective training. It's going too heavy. Sets of five to 10 reps to stimulate the really fastest twitch fibers is a great way to grow your triceps. It just so happens that the pushdown is probably not ideal for that. If you're remotely strong enough, you start getting into the problem of if you do that much weight, you're actually getting thrown off balance and being picked up by the device. It's just not tenable. In addition to that, you have all these variations of tricep extensions and tricep presses and dips and close grip presses and jams and skulls. You can use a bunch of those for sets of five to 10, no problem. And you can save things like the pushdowns for the higher reps that are really impossible or just not very effective with a lot of those other exercises. So my personal recommendation to you is to save tricep pushdowns and extensions for sets of 10 to 20 reps or even sets of 20 to 30 reps are awesome and feel free to metabolite technique the crap out of this exercise. Myo reps, drop sets, occlusion training even works for triceps, and supersets are excellent. So you do a set of 25 almost to failure on pushdowns and immediately you drop down and do as many close grip pushups as you can. Mwah, perfect. Your triceps will scream at you in a very loving way that actually tells you they're growing. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. If you have questions or comments, I believe YouTube allows you to put those in right below. And if you want us to do other videos on other muscle groups and other exercises, let us know. Thank you for subscribing. If you are, if you haven't subscribed, give it some thought. See you next time for the next exercise.